But yeah, founder and director of RC Props and Sporting, shoot host at Bullen, shoot host extraordinaire, and previously sales director at Betty's Hall, nonetheless. Um, and um, and we took it to sort of to nearly 10 million where we set 10 million eggs. So you know, we we sell chicks and poults. Uh, we do rearing equipment and sheds, we do props, we do the shooting as you know. I mean last week we sent 150 tonne of straw to Ireland. I really enjoyed it. Do you miss Briggins? Uh, do I miss Briggins? Welcome back to the podcast. Um, today's episode we've got a very special guest, a good friend of both of ours, um, Richard, Tricky, Trick, Dick, Dicky. Shag, Shag Beaner, <laughs> Beaner, <laughs> Crofty, Crofty. Even. There's a million, say, there's a <laughs> million just names for the boy. And uh, just to name a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, Which one are you today then? Which, you know. I think Richard today. I'm Richard. feeling, um, okay, Richard. certainly being here at EJ Churchill, uh, um, I need to come by my uh, professional name, uh, which is Richard Crofty. Absolutely. I don't think I've ever called you Richard in my life. No, you've called, you've, <laughs> I've never exactly. called you Richard. I'm you've sorry. Got, you've called me a lot of other things. Well, Crofty normally, <laughs> yeah. Normally Crofty, but yeah. But, yeah. Founder and director of RC Crops and Sporting, shoot host at Bullen, shoot host extraordinaire, and previously sales director <laughs> at Betty's Hall, nonetheless. That's quite right. Quite Royalty, right. Rob. Royalty. Good well, job we got the red carpet out. Absolutely. <laughs> Good job we got the red carpet. <laughs> uh, that's How long kind. were you at Betty's for? Uh, so I joined Betty's in 2008. Yeah. Um, right in the recession year, which. Yeah, uh, I remember, which yeah. uh, which was tough, as you remember. Um, so yeah, I sort of started underneath Will Criddle, who yeah. I know you know well, yeah. um, and then sort of worked my way through the ranks very slowly. Started as just doing the roving syndicate days, um, and then sort of sort of went up through the ranks and um, and became sales director in 2015. But you did a lot on the rear inside, didn't you? That was that was yeah, also exactly a that. So when Will was there, I mean, Will, as we all know, is is very very good at shoot sales and a very good shoot host. So there was no real growth for me if I was to stay there because at that point he was very established at Betis. Yeah. Um, so I swapped back to the rearing side. Um, in those days we were hatching about one and a half million somewhere there um, and then we really pushed hard on the sales and sort of increased the incubation capacity in bits and pieces um, and, um, and we took it to sort of to nearly 10 million where we set 10 million eggs. So um, we were very much involved there. Um, I spent most of my winters at the Brigands as you well know yeah. in the uh, uh, obviously in the shoot season um, and then straight back to the hatchery come February. So yeah, it was a great journey. I started there in 2008. Um, I, I drew, drew stumps as, as it were uh, last year. So we started RC Crops back actually uh, in 2018, although ran it upsides with Betis and then made the sort of full plunge yeah. um, uh, last year. So last April. So we've been going 12 months and we've had an amazing Amazing 12 months, um, lots of different things. Um, it's been very exciting and I've, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Do you miss Brigands? Uh, do I miss Brigands? I shot there a couple of times this year, loved it. It's beautiful. Um, I, do, I don't miss running it. I yeah. miss, I suppose, being around there, but you know, as, as one book closes, another one opens. Yeah. Um, it is you, a phenomenal shoot, isn't it? I mean, yeah, probably. There's no two ways shoot. about it. it. There's nothing. Is it the best? It depends what 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 the best is. I mean, I suppose you no know. No such thing, is there? You know, the That's best shoot. <laughs> <laughs> the best shoot to some people is something in the Cotswolds. To other people, it's something in Wales. Yeah. To other people, it's something. But if you in want Devon. that high bird experience, if you want the toughest shoot on its day, I don't think you'll match it. No, personally, no. Um, the all round package I think is very good. Um, having said that, you know we've we've sort of concentrated more on Exmoor, as you well know. Yeah. Um, and again, the package is there is very good, but it's it's you know it's very different. Um, there's something there for the for the you know the most sort of serious game shots, and there's also something there if you need to show something for some people that may be less experienced yeah. or from overseas. Um, however, Brigands is close to my heart. I ran it for 12 seasons. Yeah, you, it's um, always going to be your baby in a and way. And it was isn't phenomenal. It? I mean, yeah. it was a it great. It's very strange going there without you now. I'm is it? Say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I've had some days they've been a lot better in fairness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't have been any worse. Um, no, <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> Just for the record, yeah, I'm lying. I'm joking. Um, okay, that's not the yeah. case. No, um, no, it's a phenomenal place. I mean, pushing pheasants really where pheasants should, shouldn't be coming from. Yeah. I know when we went up and uh, and we were doing some Tweedle. Um, raffles and bits and pieces, and uh, and we took the the drone up from Tommy's, and uh, we, the idea was to film it yeah, from where the mental, gun, yeah. where the guns would stand to where the birds were flushed, yeah. and uh, and the sort of drone stalled. And I said to Sam, you know, why is that stalled? And he said it's limited to 100 meters, so, and it was sort of still 30 meters <laughs> from the flush <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that would be why it yeah. makes them so difficult. And the pheasants yeah. are all flying above the drone. Yeah. 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 Right? I mean, yeah. it would be difficult for some. I mean, I find it easy, but. Uh, no. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but no, um, it's uh, it's a true did you, special. Did you see when you were there, and we, we always come back to this, did you see a few standout shots that consistently hit them? Because I don't think anybody can consistently hit those massive high birds. Did you, is there anybody? Yeah, I mean, there was that saw? Rob, that Rob Fennick guy that was very good. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, he, know, he shot the low ones. You know, he shot the highest bird, even if he wasn't shooting there, if you know what I mean. Um, but, uh, I paid no. you to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just, no, I mean, you know yourselves, the, the, the general people, your Rob Hunts of the world, your Gerwin Joneses, um, your Paul Gillett's very good. Yeah, you know, yeah. you get those, those standout shots, which yeah. they're doing it a lot, but they're doing a lot of the, of the right stuff. Yeah. You know, you get somebody who shoots very well in the Cotswolds and they'll be the best Cotswold shot. You know, you go and show them something like Tommy's. It's a bird that's, that's, that's dipping, diving, curling, swinging, um, and, and it's a completely different target. Yeah. Yeah. You are dealing with ballistics. You are at the very edge of what's capable. Um, uh, but having said that, you know, you see some unbelievable pheasants that you would never even dream would even, would even, you know, it wasn't in range, but you know, some, some of the birds that are killed, that was quite phenomenal, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, yeah. and it's Imagine. not just the height, you know, you get a windy day. I know Tommy's on a windy day. You'd have, you know, a bird that was, that was no higher than 60 yards, but technically unbelievable yeah. because you know, they're doing everything. Well, they're just sliding, they're just they? sliding, they're diving, their wings are curled up behind them. They're doing <laughs> unbelievable things. Um, but yeah, no, very interesting. It's a, it's an amazing shoot. And even a, a pheasant, you think, right, I'll get tucked into this, get my eye in. I mean, they're easy as, to miss a, yeah. as the high ones, yeah. you know. Um, but, um, but no, a phenomenal shoot, an amazing, amazing journey for me, really. Um, and, you know, we've still... What did you do before Betis then? I don't... So before, I mean, I, I joined Betis when I was 23. So I went yeah. to Sirencester and then I went on to um, a game farm for a bit. Did a couple of summers on a game farm. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I went up to Leg, the River Shin, owned by the Greenwoods, actually. Um, and did a bit of sort of looking after fishing parties and just finding my way. I actually went for an interview with Roxton's, but didn't did get you? it. Yeah. Um, and then joined joined Gwyn pretty much two years after yeah. uni and, and sort of started from there, really. Yeah. You missed out your Arctic, your Arctic wagon driving. Oh, phase. yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I have got a lorry <laughs> license. I actually went on a CPC well, last a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I've got the body for it as well. I've got everything. Got through um, a few roll ups back in his day behind the wheel. Let Christ, me tell you. Red Bull roll up. Bacon butty. I tell you, the funniest one I'd, uh, I'd just done my, my HGV class one, and my uncle runs a haulage business. He said, Right, I've got just the job for you. This is about my second or third time I'm in. I'd like you to fly to Riga, pick up a lorry, and drive it from basically Riga in Latvia to Chamonix. This was before Satnavs. Oh, yeah, well, that sounds great. Yeah. So we've got a left hand drive um, Arctic lorry never driven on the wrong side of the road before and i've got to go through six countries <laughs> so um yeah quite interesting it was uh, it, it gave me time to find myself as it were um, <laughs> and in, in between back, back in, in, in between pulling out of in pulling out of other in front of other lorries and christ knows we what we say so. it builds character and it's certainly done that us, but yeah no we uh, yeah i'm not the best lorry driver but i can get one from a to b <laughs> it's just whether you hit on b on the way to c that's i was just problem. about to say depends um, what you take out unbelievable damage yeah, you wouldn't want to be fragile as it were but jesus man um, but no we stopped in um, funnily enough I, I got pulled over on the swiss border and um and it was like minus temperatures and um anyway so i i trundle off on my lorry and i get pulled over by the police and you know i'm just like well, you know what on earth have i done wrong sort of thing i didn't realize it was illegal to drive after 10 o'clock at night and five o'clock in the morning or something and there i am i was like roads are quiet no other lorries <laughs> on the road it's just me <laughs> just thinking um, what's this about so, which was brilliant so um anyway i got a right telling off and then pulled war, in bits and, yeah i mean you just got to get on haven't you yeah. um and uh <laughs> you anyway. gotta get to show anybody yeah on yeah. his 37 hour solid stint <laughs> yeah no, that, well, that was the thing i mean i got flown out there on the friday this nissan, nissan exhibition uh, was going through the ski resorts and it had been to russia got dropped to Riga for me to pick up and uh, I was told you know you Friday you get in the lorry and you drive it's got to be in Chamonix by Wednesday so no problem at all anyway by the uh, by the Friday it never turned up never turned up Saturday never turned up Sunday I got in that lorry at three o'clock on Monday morning and we pulled into Chamonix at 11 o'clock Wednesday morning brilliant <laughs> phenomenal just <laughs> constant just brilliant just got to keep going isn't you? yeah it's just you keeping Marlboro, away Marlboro you, golds you, in those old days you, and, gonna, and that just kept you going oh, I, I had a mate it's a great story he um he had he, he used to drive somebody, quite a well-known shooting person all the time. And this person was a machine. It just was like three in the morning, going to Scotland, everything else. And he uh, had to drive him everywhere. And literally it was just ongoing. He said he's got absolutely exhausted. So I thought, well, how do you keep awake? He said, I've tried everything. 
Pro Plus, Red Bull, <laughs> sm- cigarettes, you know, he said everything. And I said, what? I said, what? He said, it literally, it was nothing. I've tried the whole, you know, holding my eyelids open, <laughs> resting <laughs> one eyelid, holding the other eyelid open, resting the other eye. I said, he said, that didn't work. So he said, so I've got a perfect way. And he had quite long hair. And he said, uh, he'd jacked the seat up in the car. He'd open the sunroof. He'd put his hair in the sunroof, <laughs> close the sunroof. And if he nodded off, he'd yank his head on the hair. He said, it's the only thing that could keep him awake. It's, it's That's not good, is it? Genius. We are not condoning uh, dangerous driving. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Can, yeah. I, can I just, can I just yeah, say that? The it's, it's, a, it's a blooming good... Uh, we well, could do, we've all got too short hair, but yeah, someone yeah, with long hair, yeah. put it in the sunroof. That's and fantastic, It works it? out, doesn't it, mate? Good stuff. No, no, quite right. And tell us about Bullen, because I've was very lucky to take some clients to Bulland with you this year. And I'm very lucky, obviously, I know the owners of Bulland. And I mean, it is a phenomenal shoot now, isn't it? I mean, it, it, I'm saying that as if it wasn't a phenomenal shoot. It was a good shoot. Yeah. But I mean, I, I get asked lots, but as an all-round package now, from the moment you arrive to the moment you leave, in my eyes, it's one of the very, very best. Yeah, I think we're we're really lucky, as you know, um, the two main investors there, um, John and Michael, as you know, um, we're very lucky. They want they want to enjoy their time when they're shooting. Yeah. So, if um, they basically given me the ability to do what I want to do, yeah. um, and obviously when you're running a completely commercial shoot, um, you know you have you have um, purse strings that you have to keep to because you know shooting, as you well know, has a high turnover, but actually the margin that you're making after costs isn't serious. No. Um, so we've been given the ability to to go up that next level, you know, and and to sort of you know just just sort of dot the i's, cross the t's. Um, people enjoy it. The lodge that, that's, that's been built that I know you've stayed in and you've enjoyed um, is brilliant. Um, we've, we've plenty of staff there to look after the to look after the guns on hospitality. We've changed lots of drives, the way things are being driven. We've changed a bit of blanking in. Um, we've changed bits and pieces throughout. I mean, it, you know that you can't make the hills any higher. There are some make great drives like St yeah. Michael's, for instance. Yeah, that. Um, have you, have you, I've not been yet. Have you no. not been? No, no. This St Michael's is, and I tell you what, it's amazing. It produces some unbelievably high birds, and it looks high, but yeah. it doesn't look as high as it. Sh- when you look no. at it, you don't think they're going to the be. The birds as high. are higher than what they're it looks. They're high, yeah. miles yeah. higher than what it looks, and they just come off, and they're just monsters. I mean, we the, the pictures in the videos are oh, insane. We like, had a, yeah. that drive. Yeah. We we've, I did it. We did it once this year, and we had a team that was shooting. I mean, really, really well. And yeah. Croft is like, right, we're going to have to sort this out because they've shot quite a few. Yeah. So we go to St. Michael's. I think we shot seven hundred shots for thirty-two yeah. birds or thirty-one sort of them, birds, yeah. and they were. Phenomenal shots, yeah. Muscos and you know right. Ian yeah. and all that lot and Jack. Yeah. I mean, they were. No, it's um, it's a it's a very good drive, and I think, you know, we've um, we've certainly done done a few changes. We've got a lot more to come. Yeah. Um, obviously, getting all the landowners on board, which is is challenging at times because what they want might not be what we want. Um, but we are we are getting bigger. We're growing. We've got everything signed up now. We've got tracks going in, gun stands going in, lots more lots more crops. The detail I find as well when you're there. You know, it's everywhere you go, every stand. Has a, has a peg with a hook where you can hang your slip. So if it is wet or something, you're not, you, you know what I mean? You yeah. know, every little area has a little plinth to stand yeah. on. It's, and that's so important the, nowadays, it's isn't it? When you, because let's be honest, it costs a lot of money, a lot of money. to shoot at the yeah. top shoots. And you're kind of starting to expect that because yeah. the attention to detail needs to be there. And when yeah. you go somewhere like that, it's when you go other places where you and you and you don't get that. You yeah, sort of think, and all of a sudden you yeah. you're upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sort of yeah. think, oh, wish I had a peg. I mean, how I spoiled are you when you think you're going to want yeah. that? But yeah. You know. No, and I agree. I think, you know, another lot of work we're going to be doing this year is I know that, you know, a couple of the drives where you actually walk, not into a release pen, but it feels like you are. Um, so we are changing all of the releases. Um, we're going to be putting nice five bar gates up, stock fencing up. So actually when you walk around the chute now, you won't, hopefully you won't see any release pens at all, wow. you know, and, and just trying to make the whole experience um, you know, some of the, like you say, the best package and, and the chef we've got is very good and just, just trying to go that next level because I'm very aware it is very expensive but I'm also very aware that the cost to put a day on is very expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, but you've never been a keeper, have you? So Never been a keeper. So you've no. never been a keeper. So when you go somewhere like that, which was good anyway, do you not get nervous and think, how do you improve Shit, it? I'm going to have to move. The, I've asked them to do this or move that or move this or do that. Do you not go, yeah, God, yeah. If that, I mean, it's a huge amount of cost and... 
no. Do you ever get kicked back and, and the keepers the is, go, oh, no, we've done it like this for years or... Absolutely. And and to be fair, you know, you've got to... You've got and to how have you learned... Sorry, and how have you learned that side as well? Does that make... Because if you've we never did, been a keeper and no, no, driven never, pheasants... No, quite right. I mean, the thing where I've learned more than ever was at Betis, hosting a day shooting, Gwyn always said, you run it from the bottom. It's because the keepers unless they're down the bottom, they can't see what's going on. No. So as far as driving pheasants goes, we've done it for a long time. Um, it is up to the keepers to get the pheasants there. I understand that if they're not pulling in, we need to cut them back or we need to blank them in. Um, but no, you're quite right. You know, my actual keepering, I suppose, knowledge, knowledge would be there, but the actual keepering experience wouldn't be. You right. know, we've all done bits of keepering on small shoots, but nothing to this nothing, scale. No. Um, but, but you I've can spent, still make the difference by seeing it from the bottom. Yeah, and I spend a lot of time with Steve, the head keeper there. You know, we I go behind the scenes this time of year all the time. We talk about crops, where he wants them to take off, where we're going to put release pens, bits and pieces. Um, and I'm behind the scenes the whole time this time yeah. of year. I spend Brilliant. more time behind the scenes than in front of the scenes. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a bit like, I suppose, last year, you know, we took, we took a new partridge valley on. We wanted to lengthen the season to make it sort of all the... Um, fixed costs over more days, I suppose. Um, and we took on and uh, yeah, well, we'll just pop a pop a, a big cover that side and that side, and then we'll put the partridge there, and that will be fine. And that was fine. They went there; it all looked good. And then we did three or four drives like this. Right, we'll go and sell some partridge days. Yeah. So we sold eight or nine partridge days, and it got to about the twelfth hour before the first day. And I thought, I didn't actually think this might not work. You know, <laughs> this 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 potentially might not work. Um, and then I'm like, hmm. I hope it does, because this is going to be very embarrassing. <laughs> um, but to be fair, you know, we found our feet and uh, the partridges performed. There's um, many, many times where you hear horror stories and it actually doesn't go to plan. No, no quite right. No. Often you, you go and look at a drive and you think, Christ, that's going to be incredible. We'll put a cover there, we'll put a pen there. How can this fail? And it doesn't work. And then on the other hand, you look at drives, well, we'll put a little cover there. That'll be a nice outside day. And they just sit stand and on their tails yeah, and they're yeah. the best drive, you know. And, and I don't think, you know, even the best keeper in the world, you cannot tell whether a drive is going to be what it's going to be like. You know, like St. Michael's, you know, it looks like it's going to be a 50-yard, 40, 50-yard drive. But when they come off the back, it's different. And until you actually start driving them and properly driving them, um, you don't know. I mean, we put, a, we put a load of beaters in on the Sunday before the Tuesday last year. I thought, I'll just get four or five beaters, see what these partridge are going to do. And I mean, A, we didn't see very many, and B, they didn't fly. I thought, oh, we're really in for it here. But then when you get the full team and everything's going, it makes it's, a big so difference. Yeah. it's a big difference. And how many days have you done at Bullen this time? Uh, we it's your did, first season there, yeah? Yeah, so we did, um, we did 80, 80. And you're sure. every single one of those days, 80 days? I did every one other than one, yeah. And yeah. as a shoot host, what, that must take its toll on you. Because I that's one thing, when I first met you, which would be going on four years ago, it was, it was the first season stone. of... Brigands. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was, slim, I was slim back then. <laughs> <laughs> and it just always amazed me that every morning, it didn't matter who was in front of you, in terms of the team, there'd be a smile on your face and you would be the same Richard all day, every day. And that yeah, is a skill be. that is not... It's a gift. Very, it isn't well, it? It's a gift. It, and, 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 and let's be honest, you can get some people that you do not want to host for whatever reason. Oh, you can get it could some be very unbelievably hard work. Obnoxious mm. people. But... It just Especially at Betis, seem... on your yeah. single gun days, you know, oh, where people yeah. can buy a peg. Because yeah, realistically, yeah. they've spent a fortune, yeah. Yeah. and they don't care about six people they might not know. They, they want no. it to be about them, don't they? They want to be in no, the shooting on what is drive. The, you know, But it's the same as you guys. I mean, you know, Rob, obviously you run EJ Church, and Sam, you're in front of people all the time, you know. A lot of that, my but most frequent asked question is exactly what you said, you know, how do you do it? But mm. at the end of the day... You run a shooting school 365 days a year. You're in front of people 300. It's a, it's my job. I enjoy it if it goes well and the guns love it and they're a good crew. What what better job? Where it's hard is where it goes wrong. You know, January is very difficult because you're 70 days in really. The birds are getting less obviously. Everyone's getting a bit naggy. The guns' expectation for some reason in January goes up. It should be this is the um, pinnacle time. It's going to be know, the best. And, and oh, I want to shoot in January. Yeah, January's the, the best. Birds. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it's um, oh well, they, they just split on me there slightly. Do you, well, do you disagree with people that think that? Yeah, I do. I mean, you yeah. know, January, back in the day on farm shoots, January's the time yeah. because, A, yeah. they don't put them out till September, so they're not fit to shoot really till December anyway. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, on, on the level that you guys are involved in and I'm involved in, January is not the time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the first week after Christmas, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, 
you, you know, if I wanted to really show the shoot off last week of November when they've been through a few times and there's plenty of quantity there as well. That's the time. Um, that's the time. Can I have a discount on my January days, please? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've no, no, yeah. got that on camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. No, tried, January, I've, I've I've January is the perfect time I, to come. I find the... Uh, Coming from the, the man that gives away discounts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean the double you days. You don't even to spell this count. Though. The double days always Stop work it, in okay. January. It's the single sweats, ones yeah. you want to watch. Yeah. Here, is it me? <laughs> um, no, but I mean, do you find that with the clays? They, you know, you know, when you get through to January, they get a bit less. Yeah, or, they get a bit. They get a bit yeah. funny in January. Yeah, they get yeah. tired in January. <laughs> they fly yeah, a bit yeah. different. Yeah, yeah they fly. Different. A bit I should have actually warned the camera and the audio listeners. We are at Churchill's. If you can hear banging like Beirut going on outside, you've got a registered compounder, haven't you? So it's like a pound a shot or something. When every time we hear a shot, it's at like a pound. Or ten, no, yeah. ten no, pounds from it. It's yeah. just cha-ching in Rob's brain. It's <laughs> no, it's far <laughs> more than that. Thirty-five p. Thirty-five p. Thirty-five p. So it's gone silent now. You've said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone heard. I'm not sure. Oh, it's not worth it. getting out of bed for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't um, start picking on me, you two. All right. Oh, thirty-five. Oh, seventy. <laughs> Can you hear that? Fifty. I can't even do the math. The bang is coming through. Can you? Um, yeah. No, that's good. So. so Crofty, you've always sort of played, well, for the last three years with RC Crops, maybe two and a half, is it? Mm. You launched quite a different sort of a business because, I mean, self-admittedly, at the start, you didn't know a right lot about crops, so you just saw no, an no. opportunity. So you put them in the ground, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's turned into a bit of a, a yeah, monster, so, hasn't it? I mean, yeah, like, exactly. as far as people in the industry right now, on social media, proactiveness is that your middle name at the minute. You, you're doing all sorts, aren't you? Yeah, we've got to be, we've got to be, you know, seen to be trying. And um, I suppose Rob Hunt, going back to Rob Hunt, he's a great friend of mine. I know he's a good friend of, of, of Rob's as well. Um, we're always very aware that our primary income or 100% of our income came from game shooting. So um, I wanted to change that slightly because if game shooting goes, then we've got nothing to go to. Touch so wood. we um, we set up. Rob said, you know, why don't you sell sell a bit of maize on the side? Um, to the to the gamekeepers for game cover. So we started out, and it was very, very small, as in very small. You know, you do maybe 500 acres a year. Um, and then we sort of started to ramp it up, thought, right, people started asking different things. Do you do kale? Do you do triticale? Do you do wild bird seed? Do you do stewardship mixes? And of course, me being me, yeah, 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 we do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah we do a lot of... Yeah, that's in like fact, here. Yeah, in the fact, answer's yes, and you go, yeah. how the hell are we going to do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. we do a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, no, joking apart, so, yeah five years ago or four years ago um yeah we do that and we've grown and grown and grown um and we've now got you know factories all over well all over europe really um making different mixtures i never realized how but much all for game cover crops no now we do all farming we do forage maize right. biogas maize um wow. we do flowers color boost flowers yeah. um we do all the stewardship mixtures all the sfi yeah. mixtures. so that's massive now of course so now i mean i fell world. into that i mean i'm not trying to say that i've been clever at all but um, the stewardship and the SFI mixtures is yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, so where people would buy 20 hectares of wild bird scheme, which was, you know, good order, fine. You know, now you're looking at seven, 800 hectare yeah. patches, which yeah. is a lot more, it's easier, to be, it's easier for our, us to be more competitive. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of buying power. So we go straight from Do you think they'll to get farm. to a time where that just gets so big and so big and so big, you'll have to back off doing as much shooting or not? I think we'd employ more. We've just employed yeah. someone now. You know, at the moment we are pushing hard. We're trying to do, you know, a variety of things. You know, we, we sell chicks and poults. Uh, we do rearing equipment and sheds. We do crops. We do the shooting, as you know. I mean, last week we sent 150 tonne of straw to Ireland. Um, you know, we are very straw. much... Straw, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Bite, yeah barley straw, yeah. Um, yeah, Two actually. Island. I mean, come on. So yeah. if there's any farmers listening <laughs> yeah, to this like podcast... <laughs> what do you mean? If there's any farmers listening to this podcast going, I wonder where my straw went. It's been... <laughs> yeah. It's disappeared. yeah, quite right, yeah. Where the straw go from have my Lor shed? Have Laurie will load it. He yeah. is your man. Um, no, but, you know, joking apart, we've dabbled in fertiliser. You know, the way we see it is we're offering a service yeah. um, and if we can be um, competitive then that's great. But also we offer an after-sales service. Are you happy? We've got girls in the office that will, you know, we just, we're just organised. Are you we, rearing trip chicks as well? No, so what we do is we work with a number of different hatcheries. Yeah. Um, we bring a few in from France. Uh, we bring use, use, use game from here as well, but it's very much up to you. So what do you want? Do you want a first-generation chick that's never been over guns before? It's going to be more expensive, but 
you know, the, um, the breeding lines are pure, or do you want a caught up bird that's been bred from, or whatever, or however you want it, can, it can be whatever you like. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Am I going to bore people senseless? Because I wouldn't, I don't know no much about... No more than usual, Rob. Yeah, well, no more than that. usual, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't know much about the, the rearing of chicks. So talk to, you know, for people listening. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, so, you said about a first generation chick that's more money. Is that because a first generation chick is going to fly better than a second generation So basically, chick, I mean, not that you should be doing this, but at the end, before the end of the season, um, a lot of hens are caught up from shoots, yep. excess hens. Yep. Now, basically, the way I see it, if you want to breed a racehorse that wins, you breed it from the winner, yep. not the loser. Yep. Uh, sadly, in the pheasant world, the winners have been shot. Yeah. You know, this old, the, there's a fairy tale years ago where, oh, yeah, well, you know, you catch up at the end of the season. They're the ones that fly the highest and they've not been shot. You know, that is just not right. No. No. The birds that you're breeding from are either birds that don't fly, go out the sides, don't go over the guns, or they just, they just piss off, as it were. Um, so they're now, then you breed that bird and then you get a bird that doesn't fly and then you breed from it again. And realistically, you will breed a bird that doesn't go over the fly. guns and doesn't fly. Yeah. Um, so where we I is, work with is that a thing? Like, do they actually get the traits off the mothers? Do you believe 100%. that? Yeah, yeah, really. Well, I went to Bill McFarlane's. Right, I'm not going to bore you for long on this, but they, there's a big seminar out in Wisconsin, which has just happened now. He does it every year. Yeah, that was this he, weekend, wasn't there it? There you go. Yeah. I, so I went there. Actually, very kindly asked me to speak, but sadly I couldn't make it. But Tom Pluck spoke. Did he? This He'd have done a better job than me anyway, surely. <laughs> um, the, um, but no, he, he's, the, there's a big market out in America now for game birds, so pheasant game birds, so lean meat, So, um, the, but they can't have been shot. So he then decided, right, I'm going to breed one, but obviously the size they are, it's not big, you know, it doesn't work. So he took the biggest birds from a, from a brood, weighed them, bred them, and within 10 years, he's now got a pheasant the size of a turkey. Good grief. And that's what I mean, the breeding lines... They happen very quickly. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, so, yeah, we do first generation stuff out of France that's never been over guns. Yeah. They are selected from the first hatch, which is always the, the strongest hatch um, because obviously the hens aren't getting tired. Um, and then they're put into, into their overwintering pens and they're bred from. So, they've never been anywhere else. They're, and they're what, pure. what breed? What are we. So, that's a massive thing. I mean, it depends what you're after. We do Byzantes, French Commons, Blacknecks, Melanistics, Manchurians, Manchurian Cross Byzantes, yeah. Michigans, Chinese, all sorts. So, basically... And each pigeons, one is good for a certain... Th well, yeah. I mean, like, so your, your Kansas or your, or your Chinese is designed for put in place in America where they put them out in the morning and they spring and they go vertical, a bit like a teal. Yeah. So, they're great for Norfolk or somewhere like that. Yeah. You put them over yeah. there, you handle them like partridges and they fly like dimbats. Yeah. But you go and put them somewhere like Bullen, or brigands um, they don't rely on food because they're so small and they'll either leg it off they won't put up with the pressure um, you need a big hercules like a black neck or a french common that needs his breakfast every morning which yeah. brings him back but then you have to fly horizontal because like we're so in he's a, a, well, a bit like yeah i'll yeah. be the black yeah. neck and sam would <laughs> yeah. be the, I'm the yeah. sam, sam would be the the french common <laughs> whereas you'll be no, more no 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 let's just move on <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah before we get to this little sprung <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, well, what bird would you do? I dread to think an ostrich, <laughs> <laughs> skinny legs, and a big yeah. tummy. <laughs> That's probably me. <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, so yeah, there's lots of that. So we do that. Um, but yeah, no, going pretty strong, really. Good. Yeah, it's brilliant, mate. Struggling on, we like to say, struggling on. So yeah, yeah we'll uh, we will put in the description and give you a shout out. RC crops. Charlie will pop it up on the screen right now. Get in touch with Rob for any birds and game feed, game rearing equipment, flower seed. <laughs> Pumpkin seed. If you yeah, want to buy anything, the man you can buy socks. <laughs> he's for yeah, sale, he's the He way. walked into the ground, didn't he, two minutes ago? <laughs> you know, don't let the start. Edward Dashwood was here, wasn't it? Next yeah. thing, he's at, the he's at the bar doing a deal with Edward. What, what <laughs> oh, are you yeah. selling to Edward? Right? I mean, it's out. my job to try and do a deal at EJ Church. It seems to be your job to try and stop it. Yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, sorry, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Come along, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh, thank you, Rob. I just get the invoices to pay. <laughs> yeah, quite Rob, right. pay this to Richard, please. <laughs> yeah, no, bloody right. Don't worry about but it. But no, everything's for sale. And um, um, we, we, we should probably mention on the podcast as a bit of an exclusive. We are doing a game fair stand together. RC Crops and Tweedle. Yeah. We're excellent. Opposite yeah. EJCs. Oh, yeah. Look, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be yeah. like the so gatehouse to your we massive. Could have, like, we'll be drowning out. BB you. guns, can't we? Sort of just firing <laughs> yeah. them from across. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Oh, Can you imagine geez. a serious conversation? <laughs> 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 What's that? I think I've been stung by a wasp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was that? No, it's no, going to so be a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be great. We've got some great. 
great prizes that we've been talking about. And uh, no, it'd be great. I just want to, um, you know, for that for that time of season, for us, our sales season is pretty much over, yeah. as you well know. Um, but for us as a company, it's great to be upsides with Sam um, and Tweedle. Um, but it's a real just come and have a drink and a thank you very much for Good supporting for us. Yeah. Good for you, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Look forward to it. So it should be fun. It's a good buzz. And it's a, a new venue again this year, Blenheim, Blenheim. Palace. Yeah. Well, have you you've been to Blenheim before? Yeah, he hasn't been I to haven't. Blenheim. He's a youngster, isn't he? So it yeah. hasn't been at Blenheim. It was always there, though, wasn't it? Uh, well, no, it wasn't. It used to go there every sort of four years. Ah, yeah. okay. But it was always the peak one. I yeah. mean, it would. Yeah. You know, if you got hundred thousand to the others, you'd probably get one hundred fifty thousand to Blenheim. Yeah, yeah. It was a. My uh, first interview for Better Saul was at Blenheim Game Fair. Was it? So I walked up, and it was about. It felt like sixty degrees. Yeah. It always I, uh, does. Touch what it happens again. It's always I was nice obviously weather, late because uh, normally I'm just running, running the clock pretty tight. And uh, I turned up there and I looked like literally it was so hot. And uh, I looked like I just got out of a bath in my clothes. It was so hot. <laughs> so that was great. But I um, still managed to get the job. So that was good. We had a, <laughs> we, yeah, we had a pitch one year at Blenheim. It was like, like you said, like 30 something degrees. And we had an association with Hunter Wellington. Oh, yeah. And, um, and they said, would we trade a load of... They'd got a load of wellies and they wanted us to shift. And so we took them to the game fair. We had a separate stand just shifting, selling wellies. And that was all it was. <laughs> in association with Hunter. That. Do you remember? I bet you shifted a few of them. Well, hang on. It was 35 degrees. And I was like, ah. people were going to the game fair to sell wellies in 35 degrees. Nobody is going to buy a pair of Wellingtons. No. This is just going to be a disaster. I had like an Arctic wagon full of wellies and size and everything else. Big static, um, big static pitch and everything else. Yeah. We sold like 500 pairs of Wellingtons in 35 degrees heats. Amazing. Well, it was just to make people just come. It, it, they'd sort of come with the idea they were going to buy Wellingtons. Don't care what the temperature is. Don't care if it's at the game fair. Carry them around. Whatever, is, whatever is in fashion in, the, in our industry, yeah. clothing-wise, at the time. People so just when buy it, it rains, you need to take three times the amount then, yeah, basically. Well, that's the plan, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Hunter I remember you doing massive, a... Weren't they? But you never see them anymore. Well, yeah. I, I, I remember you doing a welly wanging competition with Will Criddy. <laughs> Have you heard this story? Go on. So good. Oh, God. So Rob <laughs> knows that Will Criddle, for one thing he cannot do, In is fact, throw. I think, did we not mention this story <laughs> on the last <laughs> podcast? So it. good. But Rob sort of can throw and made it, you know, everyone knew that this massive competition of welly wanging was going on. In the middle of the aisles, at the game fair, getting a big crowd. Of course, so, you've got Criddle, haven't you? Six foot four. Hands you know. like His a sales bucket. patter through the day was like, would you like this gun? Would you like this? Would you like this? And by the way, we have a, we have a welly wanging competition where there's free drinks. <laughs> you must come. So when Criddle comes along to join in this little welly wanging, oh. Rob had got about 8,000 people there, <laughs> live watching, you know, sh shirt sleeves rolled up, ready to go. And Criddle's like, oh, my God. I'm gonna, he's like, oh, let's Will Criddle. Let's get Will. To, yeah, look at the size of the man. He's going to be able to throw. Yeah. You better move back. Crowds, this is gonna go hundreds of meters, <laughs> yeah. Do you and it like dribbled out. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it went, unbelievable. It literally went from us to that light there, it went about five meters. Oh, people was thought funny. he was so people thought he was like feeling sorry for me, so, so we're like, no, no, let's make him do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they, yeah. And it went like marginally closer <laughs> to it. Oh, God, it he wanted to kill us brilliant. since then. Brilliant. Good old Willie. We're going to get him on. We're going to get him Definitely on. Definitely get him on. Yeah, he's such yeah. a good. He's lad. done well with his with his done sporting really agency. Well. Yeah. He's done very well. He's yeah. a good lad. Yeah, no, he is very good chap. He very is. Good and chap. Um, as far as people that stand out in your mind that you've hosted over the years, you know, celebrities, if you can say who stood out. What stories have you got for us for from like people that you've hosted that you'd never expected you would be hosting? Um, who have I hosted? So I've hosted quite a few. Um, I've hosted a few of the Royal Family. Um, I've host, hosted lots of sports celebrities, F1 drivers, um, Dragon's Den people, all sorts of different people. Um, England cricketers. I probably can't say the name because no, it no, might not yeah, be politically yeah. correct. Um, however, we've had a lot of fun. Yeah. And actually what it does boil down to is that once um, once you become friends with um, with famous people if you like they are just people absolutely and you can have a lot of fun as as all of us know yeah. and uh, and um yeah i mean what a great theater too and it is just such a shame that you probably can't mention them i know because i mean this is what we're trying to do with this podcast rob isn't it hopefully get some of the you know big names on here at some point to shout yeah. about shooting and not be afraid to say yeah, yeah. i go and shoot yeah. game no absolutely right and i, I it's agree it's so hard that. from though isn't it you know yeah, it's all right for us to do it. We're in the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is my world, your world, your yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. But 
you know, when you're doing other things and you're, and social media just hammers people yeah. now, doesn't it? That's when I mean, we've gone on about this last time about it. I know. You know there's they the great the front in, page yeah. of the sun, won't the they? Great, uh, exactly that. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's funny, you know, we had, we had quite a um, high profile guy shoot with us and we took him down the village pub for a few beers and, you know, the, we've got people taking pictures of him and he quite rightly said, you know, I don't mind you taking pictures, but would you mind asking? You know, because, you know, he'd, he's, he's very hospitable with that sort yeah. of thing. But, you know, you get your worst angle anywhere. It's just, it's tough on him, isn't yeah. it? Really tough on him. What Charlie's about good at catching bad angles. I've had to tell him off recently. It's a job when you haven't got a good angle, like isn't Tommy it? Tommy Tensions. Yeah. Job when there's no good angle. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, my yeah. problem. Just keep turning <laughs> around. <laughs> keep turning around. <laughs> Give up at that point. No, no, yeah, no. They're all as bad as each other. What about just any stories where it, when you're hosting and it hasn't gone right? Oh, I've got some good ones. I've come got, on, I've got some. Really now, good ones. you have got some is, belting tell stories. Tell us some good. Come on, tell us so, when it, when you just want that ground don't name to any open names. you up. You don't no no names. Just there's a couple. There's a couple. There's there's a couple again which involves the name which I can't. But I had a guy that used to complain about everything you know it, anything and everything you could take him to a sh to a drive and do a thousand shots and he they, there'll be a, there'll be something wrong you know there's too many shots there or oh uh, too yeah too yeah. many shit too much shooting there ridiculous so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so we went back and i was trying to make friends with him just think you know life's easier you know not make friends but try and be nice to him and he just hit me over the edge we went back for elevenses and we were serving um i don't know stir fried prawns and and some some sort of pheasant and he said, nice elevens is Richard. I said, yeah, yeah, it's nice to eat what you shoot. He said, I, I don't remember shooting a prawn. I said, well, I don't remember you shooting a pheasant, but there we go. You know, just like, <laughs> um, it's just little one-liners. And, and the problem is when you are hosting a lot, as you're Straight with, off the top shelf, with right. people a lot, you know, you've got to be careful because when you've hosted 100 days, you've heard every single yeah. comeback yeah. to any different yeah. thing. Yeah. And you are um, very sharp with that. Right? You know, I mean, so. I had a guy, you know, and he kept on and on. And when we, it was quite delicate when I, when I handed my notice in at, at Betis, as, as I'm sure you, you'd understand, we'd been there for a long time. Yeah, and, of course. You know, and, uh, you know, why are you leaving? You know, why do you want to do this? Why are you leaving? And he asked me in front of people and on and on. And in the end, I said, do you want to know why I'm leaving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't have to host idiots like you any longer. <laughs> You know, just, just, you know, but there's lots of different things. And I, I mean, I wish I had written a book, really. A lot probably doesn't want talking about, but some of the things that happen just are quite I unbelievable. Know. We should all know. try and at some um, point write a book. Any yeah. any disaster moments? I, I've got a good disaster moment. Go on. Years ago when I was hosted, right? You're going to love this. I don't know why I'm saying this. <laughs> <laughs> it's at West Wickham. And we're, I'm going about 15 years. Sort all the drives out with a keeper at the time. Dave and yeah all fine know what we're doing on the third drive after lunch I lined everybody out got on the radio right Dave all lined out yeah perfect Rob thanks mate yeah yeah we're, we're gonna start making our way about 10 minutes in not, there's nothing nothing at all I'm like Dave I said you're right because I said nothing's come over that you said what do you mean nothing's come over he said why aren't you shooting I was about to get on the radio why aren't you shooting I'm like Dave there's no birds coming over this line. I'm stood in the middle of the line. What's going on? And he went, Rob, can you see that one? Nope, can't see that one. Well, you must be able to see this one. No, I can't see this one either, Dave. He goes, where the fuck are you? And I went, I'm on Dorrells. Well, I'm on Walnut Tree Bank. He said, you're joking. I said, Dave, he said, we are on different drives. I went, you're winding me up. He went, we're not winding you up, mate. He said, I said, we're doing Dorrells. He went, let me... Oh God, no! We've lined Walnut Tree Bank out. He said, "Okay." He said, "Don't worry, we'll pack up." You go, get back in the bus. Back in the bus. <laughs> Quick, hurry up! I'm up and down hurry the line up. going. There's just been a slight problem with the gun bus. Just bear with us, guys. We're there like 15 minutes in. Do you know what I mean? And not find nice a shot. Too, yeah. And literally next. And thing, ruin the next come, drive you're going the to. Next thing, piling through and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I can't that believe I've one. said that. that that's, that's quite. I a had bad. one. That wouldn't happen to him. He's a professional. God, we we trundle out of Tegwins, which I know Tegwins Drive at Brigham's, and uh, it's the furthest drive back towards Betis, if you like, right on the edge of the boundary. And I'm on the phone um, talking about whatever I'm talking about. I've got sort of eight guns behind me, eight loaders, and we've got a hell of a convoy. And um, we're just going to turn left. We're going to go and do the last drive at Guanyin. Anyway, I'm on the phone, and, da -da -da -da, and I'm in my own world now, uh, on hands-free. And I turn right, and I start going back towards Betis. I think I'm just, you know, just on the way home. 
So I'm talking to this guy, talking to this guy, and then all, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God. <laughs> no I'd God. taken the whole convoy four miles back towards Betis when we were supposed to be going three miles the other way oh. and had to turn them all around. <laughs> well, you try and turn the 16 vehicles around in, oh, in a road that's probably narrower than the car. I was like, I cannot believe this. And I just remember, I can't remember who I was on the phone to. I was like, I have got to go now. Goodbye. And then like tried to like negotiate it. And then I just had to put my hands up. I mean, I try and breeze over a problem, but I was like, yeah, no, I just went the wrong way. You know, just unbelievable. But like, do you remember my first ever day at Riggins with Dave Carey when I was yes. in my dad's car at the time? And we'd left Welsh Haven, I think, to head to Heaven's Water or something like that. I can't remember. And um, I'd lost the convoy. Yeah, I remember that. And I was, you know, signal. Yeah, nothing. First time I've been there, so I didn't have my bearings at all. I went back to the lodge. There's a chef there. Wait, do you know where they're shooting? Do you know what to drive them? No idea, but that is <laughs> useful as a chocolate fire guard. Yeah, useful. yeah. So then Crofty sends somebody back to the lodge. I'm not even shooting. I'm there with Dave Carey filming a promo video for Tweedle. Get back, they're all waiting for me. So he's driving, they're probably thinking, who is this northerner coming here? It's, you know, young lad. Brilliant. I find the hardest bit of hosting days is the convoy yeah, piece. unbelievable. It's leaving, because people are in their own world. Yeah. And, and but, suddenly yeah. they just pootle along and they go up here, or you go at like 30 miles an hour. I remember hosting day. I got to the place and we'd lost somebody at the back and I literally went 30 mile an hour all the way there and when we got there he had a right pop and he was like why yeah. did you drive like an idiot I was like I was doing 25 30 miles yeah, an hour yeah. I, I couldn't you can't drive yeah. any slower otherwise no, Mackins no, no. will try to overtake yeah, you yeah, quite and right. they're like oh well I mean they're just in their own world but I find no. that the most stressful bit is getting if you've got to go roads or to oh. get from a lodge to the shoot or something like yeah. that that's sometimes Definitely. although what three words is a game changer, isn't it? Absolute now? game changer. If you've got a reception. If you've got reception. Yeah. 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 yeah which I guess yeah, in the Welsh mountains. Shoot buses probably... are a game changer. Yeah. A proper yeah, shoot like console valley. Yeah. yeah you I don't agree want there. one, do you? We've got a mega one to sell. No, thanks. We've got a Land Rover to sell, actually. No, so we got a client of ours had one built, um, a trailer. Right. Cons Turbine, no, it's like con it's it it makes consoles look like TK Maxx. Really? It is unbelievable. Have you seen the one at Lingham? In, in, yes, in the lake. So this wow. is a, but a probably interest unit. for ten grand or something. Yeah, yeah. It, it cost him three hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> pounds to have made, and he's hardly ever used it. It is beautiful. Yeah, and you'll see it because well, on a well, shoot day, that's a game changer. We're going to advertise. You don't lose the people then, and you're unless together. the trailer comes off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you? But you don't. Or you, you've never done. I guess no. you can't on these big commercial shoots. You know, we've had a bit of call for it now. Have you? But. I think a lot of it is, you know, guys have their Range Rovers with all their stuff in yeah, it, with all their yeah. cartridges in it, and you know, they want to use driver. it. Yeah, you know, and I just think gun bosses, they're noisy, they're cold. If you're wet, you want to turn your, you know, heated seat on. Personally, I prefer to go around in my in own cars, car. Yeah. Or in someone else's car. Three or four of you in a car, yeah, great. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. But you've got the mod cons, haven't yeah. you? I've got the Bull and Land Rover set if you want it. Yeah, perfect. I think that'd be good. Yeah, it'd be really I'll, get good. It, I'll get it signed written for you and drop Thanks, it up. Mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Hospitality. I was that's on what a shoot once and this guy yeah. said he was sick all season saying if we could please just, if you could all, you know, decant into as few cars as possible. He said all season. It was like 30th of January. End of the day, he goes, he goes, right guys, so um, today, if we could all please take as many cars as possible, <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What do you mean? He said, well, I've said all season, if you could please take us fewer cars. No one listens to me. So I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try the opposite. <laughs> reverse yeah, psychology. Reverse psychology. Let's take, <coughs> let's take all the cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite yeah. right. Cool. Rab Clark, that, that was his favourite, wasn't it? When you, you know, partridges getting on into the season, they're getting jumpy. Um, just please, guys, quickly and quietly. And, uh, and then he said, right, OK, so this next drive, you could be as loud as possible. Take as long as you like, honestly. No rush. And please make sure and slam your car, door, car doors. And they're like, you are? It's like, well, you didn't fucking listen to me last time, so you might as well do what you like. Yeah, it's quite right, though, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, spot on. I think that's been a really good episode. Perfect. Thank you, mate. No, pleasure. Good to see you. Well done. Good, 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 good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, tricky, tricks, crofty, crofty, crofty. shag beaner, beaner. All of them. All of the above. All of the above. Perfect.